Yo, what's going on YouTube and welcome back to Gold Line Hockey. It's your boy Kevin Forte and we have a good one for you today. I've been looking forward to making this video and today we have two incidents that happened in the past week that have drawn a little bit of a stir up around the league creating the debate once again. What is more important in today's game? If that's even, like, why is that even the argument? The skill of the game and the grit. So, the problem is, and I see the argument from both sides, I get what they're saying. The NHL is going more speed. Skill, whatever, right? And that's perfect. Now, the problem is, you look at what happens when you go full skill and speed... What inevitably happens is, for perfect example, the New York Rangers. Now, I'm picking on the Rangers today, but we've seen it this season from Anaheim, and I'll, and I'll get to that because that's more recent. The New York Rangers were pure skill, and what happened? Another team that they have no control over, Tom Wilson, right? They drafted and developed Tom Wilson to be this big monster that kind of just ragdolled the Rangers around. He pretty much KOs Panarin behind the net, drops Ryan Strom, and nobody's there to patrol Wilson. Wilson doesn't do that. Has he done that to the Rangers this season? No, because they have Ryan Lingren, they've got Truba, they've got Ryan Reeves, who you could argue, maybe he doesn't do that. And Again, we're getting there. So the Rangers got pushed around, and we've seen Toronto get pushed around, and this season, most recently, the Anaheim Ducks. So, the argument is, the NHL has to suspend these players that are gritty and aggressive so they can change the NHL game to where there is no more fighting. Now, there's certain things that you could change, right? You know... You could change laws so people don't steal. You could change laws so people don't are deterred from doing certain things. But tell me a situation where you could change the sky's color at a notice. Tell me where the, you know, humans no longer need to take an oxygen, right? I mean, this is kind of semantics, but you get what I'm saying. There are certain things you can't change. Like humans, like we need oxygen, right? You can't change that. You can't just say, oh, well, we're going to make changes in, in society so we don't need oxygen there's certain things that you cannot change and i think in hockey it is ingrained in the sport in my opinion and i think it's pretty much the sentiment when you look at events like this that there are going to be there's going to be bullies right in hockey there's going to be bullies in the world if you don't have people to patrol those bullies or the people that are going to push you around well, don't be upset when they push you around and they take advantage of you. Because at the end of the day, what's everybody trying to do? They're trying to win a Stanley Cup. So unless you get rid of every single big guy in the league, you're never going to have this situation, this perfect utopia where it's all skill and speed. Because I hate to tell you, people watch hockey because they want to see fights. They want to see scrums. It doesn't even have to be a full fight. It, it scrums in front of the net. It gets the fans off their seats. The little bit goalie scrums here and there. Fans like that. They like the big hits. They like all that stuff. That is hockey. You cannot take that out of the game. Whether it's this egregious, you know, when you get Cronwald coming into the across the blue line. Okay, maybe we don't need that. Where he dumped in the puck and he's 10, you know, 20 feet from the puck and gets hit. I agree. Maybe that doesn't have to be in the game. Knee shots, you know, cheap shots, stuff like that. Fine, get rid of that. But the body positioning to where you hit a guy into the boards and stuff like that, you're not going to get rid of that. That is the, unless you are changing the game of hockey, which it's no longer hockey, you're never going to get this utopia world where there's no fighting and there's no aggression. And then that's where you have the Rangers. What did the Rangers do? Well, the Rangers could, this is the options. The Rangers got pushed around by Tom Wilson and the Capitals. Well, what did they do first? They complained to the league, said the NHL has to change their rules. They need to suspend Wilson and they need to change this and change that and change this and change that and change that. Well, at the end of the day, those guys got fired because at the end of the day, they could cry all they want to the NHL, you know, ride in the streets for whatever they want. Yet at the end of the day, 
it's it's out of their control. The the New York Rangers as an organization or any organization for that matter, you cannot change the game of hockey. So what did the Rangers do last summer? Well, instead of saying the game should change for the Rangers, the Rangers said, well, we have to adjust to how the game is played. And I think that's a problem throughout our society. And I think that's why we're running into this issue in hockey as well, is we're getting to the point where people want to change the game of hockey to better suit what they think the game should be, what the game ought to be. Well, the game is a certain way. It's been this way for however long. And if you want to change it, make your own game but it's not going to be hockey now you could say there are certain things that can be changed and i agree with that but at the end of the day the root of the game in terms of hitting and aggression and fighting and even chirping is starting to get where you are not allowed to chirp and i'll and i'll get there in a second so what do the rangers do this summer right well the league's not going to change for the new york rangers to better suit us so we have to adapt to the nhl and how the game is played so what do they do they bring in patrick nemeth they bring in ryan reeves they bring in these players that are bigger body guys, right? And you know what? Instead of complaining how the league isn't fair for the Rangers, they adapted. And you know what? They're going to make the Stanley Cup playoffs this year with that roster. So instead of continually complaining how things have to change for us and this and that, listen, that's not how the world works. If everybody wanted it the way they want it, we would never, not everyone would be happy. You cannot get off, you cannot have that type of world where everybody's going to be happy with everything that's going on. That's just not how anything works, right? So you look at that situation. I think that is the the most prime example of like, instead of it changing for us, we need to adapt to the game that is in front of us, the reality that is in front of us. And I think there are too many people that are trying to make this well, we're going to be the example of the team that's all skill and speed. And you know what ends up happening with them? Kyle Dubas, that was his sentiment, right? We're going to change the game to where we're the skill team and the speed team. You know what? Look a couple years ago. They didn't have Alex Kerfoot. They didn't have Wayne Simmons, Jake Muzzin. They were a much different team. And you know what? They didn't make the playoffs. They got pushed around. They got beat up by the Boston Bruins year after year. And you know what? Once Kyle Dubas said, you know what? The league's not going to change for us. We're going to change to fit the league. Look how much better the Leafs have been. Again, these are just little examples. And and let me know what you guys think, because I think there's a lot to be said here. Now, here's the flip side of the argument. So the flip side of the argument, and I went to this game last week, Islanders-Rangers, right? Close game. The Islanders played their game. The Rangers could not figure out what they had to do to, to, to score, right? They lose 3-0. Ryan Lingering lays... A questionable hit. I think it was a fair hit into the boards, but he completely pile dro- drives Beauvillier into the boards. The fans go nuts, and Anders Lee goes and hits Ryan Lindgren. And you could argue, you know, Lindgren was kind of avoiding the, the puck so he wouldn't hit him because he knew he was going to get drilled. Well, he got drilled, and then he drew a penalty. Anders Lee was the guy that took that penalty, right? So he takes the penalty. He comes out of the box, and... And the Islanders almost score off of this. Three New York Ranger guys go after Anders Lee. That plates right into the hands of the Islanders. The Rangers are down 3 0. Instead of worrying about Lee coming out of the box to go fight him, the Rangers should be trying to score a goal, right? Well, they have three guys that go after him. Barclay Goudreau ends up being the guy that goes toe to toe with Lee, and Lee just kind of throws him right to the ground, and that's it. Ryan Reeves gets a penalty. He didn't even really, he didn't even fight Lee and he got a penalty for unsportsmanlike and he ends up hurting the Rangers and the Rangers fans after the game are saying well what's the point of having Reese if he's not gonna fight Johnston if he's not gonna fight Lee for that hit what's the point of Ryan Reeves if he's not going to fight and that's the other side of the argument right because if he's not gonna fight and and quote-unquote police the game which I think there is something to that you you need guys that patrol you know that is what you have And the code of the NHL, I mean, the code of the NHL is if you have a guy that takes a cheap shot on our star player, don't be surprised when your star player ends up on the ice, you know, clutching his knee. That is how the game is. Whether you agree with it or not, unfortunately, it's it's to the point where it's like breathing, right? You need certain things in the game because that's inevitably what's going to happen. If you don't have the policers, like the guys that can patrol the game, you end up having the Tom Wilsons of the world that just 
destroy you and got to the point where he completely made the rangers change the way they did things. now everybody said oh well he's in the rangers head and he's living in their head rent free this and that but you know what at least they had the balls to actually say you know what maybe we're doing something wrong and we need to adjust to how the game's played and that's what they did and look where they're at right now so now we're getting to Reese. So that's all the lead up to what's gone on here. So for the most part, it's been pretty quiet. And for some reason, it always comes up around the playoffs and playoff time. So this was last week. The Anaheim Ducks are playing the Arizona Coyotes. Trevor Zegra scores another lacrosse style goal on the Coyotes. Now to be fair, the Coyotes, they have no shot. I mean, this is a team that is just decrepit and, and they had a decent start to the season right I mean there was some hope and this and that but you knew they weren't going to be very good but this has been a fush they are like the grumpy grandpa right now they just know that they're going into games where they don't really have much of a chance and that frustrated the Coyotes so now Zegra scores the lacrosse style goal kind of embarrasses the Coyotes right rightfully so it's been a rough season there in AZ so now later in the game Trevor Zegras is digging for a puck and I want to say Jay Beagle of the Coyotes goes and cross checks him and gives him a cheap shot Troy Terry who is the Anaheim Ducks leading goal scorer comes into the defense of Trevor Zegras and gets the shit kicked out of him. I'm sure you guys have seen the video, the photos of him. He's got two black and blues, you know, a black and blue on each eye. Just his eye almost looks like it's popping out of its socket. Like Troy Terry got destroyed. Now, should Jay Beagle have been fighting Troy Terry? I mean, Troy Terry is by no means a fighter. You knew he was ragdolling him and Beagle kept going after him. And this is something that Kevin BX has said, a former NHL player and fighter, right? He said once, you know, there is a, a responsibility when you're a big guy like a Zidane Chara of the Islanders, right? You're not going to go fight Alexi Lafreniere of the Rangers or Jack Hughes of the Devils, right? It is a it is like a astronomical disadvantage, right? It's it's not it's the lion versus the lamb in a fight. Like it's not even really close. That's kind of what happened to, to Troy Terry. And that sent a message to the Ducks like we got pushed around, and, and what is this? So then, what happens? After the game, Trevor Zegers visibly all frustrated, and he said, the league has to step in and do something. Well, unfortunately, and Kevin, again, going back to what BX has said, he said, the NHL can't do anything about this. Like, what are they going to do? They're going to suspend Jay Beagle for a game? Oh, whoop de doo He probably would prefer to be off Thursday night, you know, for the Coyotes. They're, they're, they're losing out the rest of the season, right? So it's like one of those things where even if you give repercussions, what does it matter to the Coyotes? The Coyotes have nothing to lose this year. They're going to, if anything, they might get have a better odds at the first overall pick, Shane Wright, if they lost Jay Beagle, right? Throw in another young prospect from Tucson. This is where things are at in that regard. Now, this also brings to the point, well, why are the Ducks getting picked on? Nicholas Delorier was traded from the Anaheim Ducks ahead of the trade deadline to Minnesota. Normally, during the regular season, nobody's picked on the Ducks. And now that they've traded Nick Delorier, who is their, who was their patrol guy, their fighter, he's now in Minnesota. Getzlaff retired, right? He just retired, you know, this week. So, who's the guy that's going to step in in Anaheim to take care of a Jay Beagle and pretty much kick his shit in, right? Nobody's going to do that. And that's where you're at. So Trevor Zegras, kind of like the Rangers were last year and some of the reporters, they were like, well, the league has to step in and do something and the league has to change this and the league has to do that. It's not going to happen, right? It's it's like asking for the world to have world peace. Like you're asking for things that are just like pie in the sky. Like it's not it's not going to happen. As, re as optimistic as you want to be for certain things to be a certain way, that's not the reality of what you're in. And I think Trevor Zegers at a young age is going to have to start to learn that and on the fly and hopefully soon because if you're expecting the world, if you're expecting the league to step in and Big Daddy League to come in and help you out all the time, it's not going to happen. The Ducks are probably going to have to add another grit player. I don't know who it's going to be, 
But you have to add somebody that can step in and protect Troy Terry, Zegris, Drysdale. This is the future of the Anaheim Ducks. You are investing big money into these young guys in the next couple of years. You need them to stay healthy and you need them to be protected. Connor McDavid in Edmonton. Remember when Brandon Manning of the Flyers destroyed, you know, Gave him a cheap shot into the boards, and McDavid was out for the rest of the season. He, like, tore his ACL and had multiple knee surgeries. I mean, again, because the Oilers didn't have somebody to protect him. And all of a sudden, when Luch comes in, nobody seems to be bothering Connor McDavid anymore. All of a sudden, just somehow out of nowhere, nobody's bothering McDavid. Interesting how that works, right? When there's a deterrent there there is incentive not to do something, right? You're you're not, kind of what I said in the beginning of the video, you have incentive to not break the law because you're going to go to jail, right? You have an incentive to not do something. And that's what you're seeing here in the NHL to a certain extent, right? So now this also gets us to another issue in terms of this whole debate. The other night, the Tampa Bay Lightning hosted the Toronto Maple Leafs. And I'm sure the Leaf fans are very happy. Yeah, we beat the, you know, we beat the, the lightning in Tampa six to two, whatever. What was the turning point in that game? So the Tampa Bay Lightning's Patrick Maroon and Wayne Simmons were kind of barking back and forth. Now, apparently, I guess Patrick Maroon had said something to the extent of, oh, well, you're not going to be in the league next year. And I think it escalated from there between Simmons and Maroon. And both Maroon and Simmons got 10 minute game misconducts for chirping. This is where the league's going. This is so. This is the league's way of attacking this stuff. So, so basically, they're saying they bullied each other or something. Like, I mean, I don't know what was said, but like, just very odd. And it kind of makes you wonder, like, what the hell? And then it changed the momentum. Tampa kind of stopped playing that more aggressive game, and they lose the game, and they lose six to two. Once it turns to all skill. Toronto gets what they wanted, right? Toronto, they got what they wanted. They wanted the league, Big Daddy League to step in. They give penalties, and they got what they wanted, right? So it just kind of shows you how this kind of is going. Now, this is the comments from Pat Maroon after the game. This is very telling and obviously very frustrated and hot off the mic from a tough game. This is in quote from Maroon. This game is going the wrong way. I guess you can't chirp each other on the bench now. So, definitely taking a dig at the league. He didn't say anything about the officials or anything like that. So, I hope he didn't get, you know, I hope he didn't get fined for that because he didn't call out the officials or anything. He just said the way the league is going. He worded it very well. Uh, So, I will give credit there to Maroon because he he handled this very well. Uh, But that totally changed the context of the game. And that's the league stepping in, which is what everybody wants, right? But it's not organic, right? It's not but then come a cheap shot they want the repercussions after right so it's one of those things that it's just so the skill versus grit debate really comes down to teams that want the skill game are just like you know grasping their pearls wanting something that's not there and listen i like the new game it's good to some extent but and it's more safe for the players but you know what if anything, you could argue that the code protects those star players because that is a part of the game. And as much as you hate it, love it, you know what? At the end of the day, whether you think it's right or wrong, it's still there, whether you think it's right or wrong. So that's kind of where we're at. And I think that's just, we always look at everything like what's right or wrong or morality, and I get that. But there are certain things that are just the nature of the game that you can't control. And we're talking about guys you know, you really want to talk about changing the sport. Why don't we just, you know, everybody puts on it. You know, all these players come out with, instead of hockey pants, they wear a tutu and a crown or a princess crown, whatever. And they skate around. Uh, I mean, blades, that's very dangerous. Maybe we should get rid of the blades. Uh, they have big weapons in their hand that they shoot with, right? How about we use sponge pucks instead, right? Because, you know, a regular puck, a rubber puck, that that could hurt someone. We, we wouldn't want that. Um you know, brooms are too dangerous, so I'm thinking, as, you know, what could we use as a stick? Maybe, like, something made out of foam? I, I don't know. Like, how, how far do you want to go with this? Like, hockey is a dangerous sport, and that's why people are drawn to the sport. That's the entertainment, the speed, the skill, the physicality. It's all what makes hockey hockey. 
and it's like how far do you want to go right they could and here's the other argument you take fighting and hockey fighting out of hockey and you know what those people will find something else to complain about because at the end of the day they always need that is their agenda it's they're always what's that saying if there has to you know if there's no boogeyman, nobody gets paid. So if there's no, if the, if there's not, there's never going to be a situation where the league is perfect and everybody's happy and everything is perfect and you know sunshine and rainbows and everything is perfect. No, there's always going to be something that isn't right or it should be this or it should be that. And it's like, why are you appeasing people that no matter what you do, they're never going to be appeased. And it's to the point where it's like, what more do you want from us, right? So let me know what you guys think. I'm sure there will be some comments here because this is one of those things that the league is, I don't know, I, I, I with what happened with all these events that I talked about today, it kind of makes you wonder where is the league going? And now as you know, context here, we're going into the 2022 Stanley Cup playoffs. How does this affect the playoffs? Because we know that the game changes in the playoffs. And that's another argument for another day, how the league is, you know, the league is changed, and I think that's part of the reason a team like the Leafs struggle in the postseason. There's not as many penalties, you know, as many penalties called. And we're going to see teams, and you're going to find out pretty early, the teams that rely on power plays to score goals. <clears throat> I'm thinking of a couple teams in a particular team in New York, for example, a you know, particular team in Toronto, for that matter. There are certain teams that they kind of run their game off of power plays. They're not good on five on five. They're great on the power play. But when the power plays dry up in the postseason and, you know, referees kind of put their whistle away, how are those teams going to fare? And that's kind of what we have to wait till the playoffs to find out, right? So guys, as always, thank you so much for watching this video. And I will see you again next time.